if you're using Dynamics 365 customer service today or interested in it, and what some of those capabilities might look like around auto case creation, I want to show you one of the ways that we can use auto case creation around email. So maybe you've got a support inbox. For example, I've got one set up here. Looks like I've got a couple of emails that came through. So I've got um, one from John Doe, one from David Pryor here, and one from Jesse Buchels. Now, if I want to take these emails that come through, for example, looks like John Doe has a Smart Brew 300 coffee machine that's not currently brewing a full cup, having issues with the filter, looking for some recommendations. I want to take these, and instead of having to dedicate someone to monitor this inbox, I want to take these and create a case with them in Dynamics 365. So I can do that, um, and what we're going to see here is the result of what that rule looks like once it's set up. So here's that email that came through, automatically created a case. So the case came through from Jesse, and here are the rest of those details. You can see some of that has been captured here inside of my timeline now. So I've got some of that activity tracking going on. I can see some recent cases that showed up here. Um, but really to take a look at what the back end looks like here to get this set up, what I need to do is I need to go into my customer service admin center. And once I drill down into this application through my app selector here, I can come into my case settings, and then I've got these automatic record creation and update rules. So if I go into manage, you can see where I've got this one set up currently. And I just want to show you what that might look like in case you're interested in setting up your own. So I came in and created a new one. When I did that, I needed to go through and identify what is that inbox or that mailbox that I want to monitor for generating a new case. So I went in and I, and I, and I tagged my support at stoneridgepresales.com. And then down below here, I need to set up some conditions uh, based on any emails that come in because you may not want any email that comes in to automatically create a case. So for example, if I come in here, we can see um, I made this one very simple. And I said, hey, you know what? As long as the subject contains data, let's go ahead and create a case. You may want to have more rules than that. Maybe you get a lot of junk mail. Um, you just don't want anyone in, in, in that, that sends an email uh, into that inbox to automatically create a case. But once you identify what those conditions are that need to pass in order to create a case, you can actually come in and we'll see that Power Automate, our workflow engine behind the scenes here, has a template for us to leverage. So I don't even need to go in and uh, build this from scratch. It's actually all really pre-configured. I can add some details here. So for example, when it creates that case, do I want to label it as maybe high priority um, or really update any of the other um, fields that belong to that case record. I can do all that from here, but this is all already pre-set up for you, so I don't need to really understand uh, Power Automate in great detail just to set this up. Once I am ready to use it, though, I do need to publish it um, and turn it on. So uh, those are just a couple of real minor steps that you're going to have to take or a couple actions that you have to take in order to use that flow with your auto case creation. Now, if I come back into dynamics here where I'm, I'm creating that condition and I've gone in here. Once I've got that stood up, I can go ahead and close that out. And then down here towards the bottom, I've got a few other things I can choose from. So step three, do I want to automatically respond to that email? And if you do, um, which is not required, but if you do, you can go in and you can select a template or create a template that may contain some static and dynamic content to respond back to the sender, such as We've received your case. We're currently working on it. It's being worked on by um, XYZ, and we'll be in touch soon, whatever that might look like for you. So you can go in and create that. Um, you do have some other options too. So when I come in here, I can choose uh, any unknown senders that come through. So maybe we get an email that comes in. Um, that person is not currently a contact in our uh, database. Do I want to turn those into a case? If we choose, Yes, then we need to determine what do we want to do next? We want to create a contact record for that sender, which we can do. Uh, we can choose not to as well. Uh, but a couple of different options here that we can use as a part of that automatic case creation. 
And then once we do that, once we get that rule set up and we've activated it, we can also use some case routing rules. So if I come into my routing area and I go into my basic routing rule sets, maybe I've got a specific user or a team or a queue that I want to dump that support uh, case into once it comes through. So in this example, I came in, I created a new one, and I said, hey, any cases that come in from email, I want to route to a specific user. I chose myself. Uh, but again, you could add that to a queue or to a team if you'd like to as well. So just to see what that looks like, again, very simple. Came in, I gave it a name, and then I said, hey, any anything where that origin equals email, when it comes through, let's go ahead and assign it to a specific user. So in this case, again, I, I just chose myself. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close out of there. I did not activate that, but you would need to activate it um, prior to that routing rule coming into effect. So. Again, uh, very straightforward uh, process. Um, you do need to have access to the customer service admin center. Uh, so that is gonna come with a security role that would be assigned to you. So if you've got that uh, access, this is a quick and easy way for you to come in and take advantage of some of this out of the box functionality in the customer service hub application. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to help you troubleshoot or walk through some of this in more detail. Thank you.